Welcome to St Albans. The signalling is all about uh, safety, safe running of trains, and once we've ensured safe, the safety of trains, we ensure that they run on time. To ensure safety, we give each train its own space, and the train moves from one space to the next space before a second train can come into the first space. And the way that works in St Albans is we have Harpenden to the north, St Albans in the middle, and Knapsbury to the south, and between, say, between Harpenden and St Albans, on any one of the four lines, we say it's one train at a time. So we have a section of track between Harpenden and St Albans, and we give that space to a train. And it moves then through St Albans onto Knapsbury before a second train can come from Harpenden. Now we have technology around uh, that system to ensure that the, uh, the trains remain spaced apart and we use these instruments along here. There are four sets of instruments. There are four sets of instruments and it's a set of instruments per pair of lines in each direction. So we have this one is to and from Harpenden on the slow lines which is on the far side and these three together are to and from Knapsbury on the, uh, on the far side, on the slow lines. And you notice this is um, an all-in-one uh, unit, British Railways from the 1950s, and these are nice polished wood instruments, and these three together have the same function as that one. And similarly here we have to and from uh, Harpenden on the fast lines on this side, and to and from Knapsbury on the fast lines. The fast and slow lines to separate the speed of traffic. There's a bell in each instrument and they all sound slightly differently because if the, the signalman is having a quiet slumber on the bench and a bell rings, he needs to jump up and answer it and instinctively know which one it is. So those instruments are used for signalling trains which we'll see in a moment in the demonstration. Along the front of the shelf uh, here are various instruments. There are plungers, which used to work electric locks on some of the levers. And there are indicators like this one here, which repeats the indication of a signal. So if we, this one's for number 12. So if we pull lever number 12, this indicator comes from the on position to the off position, which, um, proves to the signalman that the signal has worked correctly. It's an, ele an electrical instrument, so if it doesn't work, it might be working other electrical locking equipment which stop other things working, so it's important to see that that works correctly. Uh, similarly, there are indicators for colour light signals. This one's red and uh, green there and that would uh, give a sim similar indication. Then there's the lever frame, and there are levers of various colours, a lot of red ones and some yellow ones. Uh, the red levers work uh, stop signals, so horizontal means stop, and 45 degrees up or indeed down <coughs> means uh, proceed or all clear. So stop for danger and all clear. And the yellow levers have a similar function, but yellow means caution. So this uh, horizontal is caution and inclined is uh, all clear. So the driver can pass a signal at uh, caution like this, but if it is at caution, he has to slow down and be prepared to stop because the next signal is, is at stop. If it's all clear, then that means that all the following signals are clear as well. So that's the red and the uh, yellow levers. Then there are black and blue levers, and black works um, the points. So 17, for instance, is the crossing there, and there are other points working these crossings and, and, and into the sidings and so on. They're worked from the black levers, and then Blue levers lock certain points. So 15, for instance, is a lock on the points there, because if you come down here, you can either go straight or across there, and that's a so-called facing point, which needs to be locked in position. So 
I'll just demonstrate that with this um, piece of track. Um, the, the train can either go straight or round here. So the black lever sets the position that's required and the blue lever locks the points in position with a device under here so that if these can't move underneath the train because if, if it jiggles around under the train you might end up with one part of the train going that way and another part going that way which is not uh, a good idea. Uh, so um, the facing point locks, the blue levers, are an early safety feature. Uh, finally, there are uh, four of these black and white chevron levers which work emergency detonators. And again, we have a detonator here. So it's, um, I was going to say, a small, uh, it's not quite so small, explosive device that sits on the rail. And the compression of the wheel going over this make, uh, makes it... Uh, go off and makes a loud bang so, and that's an emergency signal to the driver that something has gone wrong and he should stop the train. Uh, hopefully not used very often but important when they are used uh, and in an emergency the signalman would put the signals back to danger in front of the train first and then pull the, the detonators um, and hopefully the train will stop safely. The, uh, the lever frame then also has uh, mechanical interlocking. So on number 11, for instance, there's a small 15 on here, which indicates that uh, 15 has to be pulled before 11 because 11 at the moment is locked. But if I pull 15, then that releases 11 um, and keeps 15 in position. So having pulled 11 now, that's locked. So there's a two-way relationship between these levers and I put that one back and it will release that one again. There's um, similar locking up and down the frame. It can get, um, that's a simple one, it can get much more complicated. For instance, uh, number nine here has four levers to pull before nine can be released. Right, okay, so we'll now do the demonstration which shows how we run a train from Harpenden through St Albans to Knapsbury along this up slow line and it's up towards London in railway parlance and the slow lines on the far side and the fast lines on this side separate the speeds of traffic. So we come along here and we reach a facing point there which needs to be locked with the blue lever, that's number three. And once we've locked the points, we can then clear signals 2, 6 and 10. And they, those themselves release number 1, the caution or distance signal, which is shown on the, the lever plate here for number 1, 2, 6 and 10. So we start the demonstration. We're all clear. There's nothing shown on the diagram. All the instruments are normal. There are no trains here. But now we have a bell ringing and it's Harpenden calling us on this bell here. So we answer Harpenden with the one. And we get a code 3 pause 1. 3 1 is an ordinary passenger train. So Harpenden is asking our permission to send that train towards us. So we're going to reply to the code uh, as our acceptance of the train. 3 1 and we put the indication across to line clear, which is um, a continuing reminder of the state of the line. And this indication repeats in the top window in the corresponding instrument in Harpenden and releases Harpenden's signals to send the train towards us. So we've given permission to Harpenden. The next thing is we receive two bells from Harpenden, which is the train entering the section between us, one train at a time. So we answer that and put the indication across the train on line, as I say, as a continuing indication of the state of the line. To keep the train running, we then call Knapsbury because as we need permission from Knapsbury. It's the same 3 1 code which Knapsbury responds to and gives us the line clear indication here. 
which would electrically release our signals to send the train on. So we gave permission to Harpenden, Knapsbury gave permission to us. We can now clear the, the signals. We lock the points with number three, and then it's two, six, and ten, which themselves release number one, the caution signal, which then goes to green. So we've given the train a clear run through St Albans. It is a passenger train, so it will stop at the station, but as far as the signalling is concerned, we've given it a clear run through. The lights on the diagram show the position of the train, so it's now arriving with the lights uh, um, illuminated there. So we can see that it's past signal number one, and it's past signal number two, so we can put those signals back to caution and then to danger so that if anything happened um, and the second train came when it shouldn't do at least there's a signal at danger behind the train. Another important task of the signalman is to check that the train has a tail lamp on the back. This is a tail lamp and that indicates the train's complete and hasn't left half of its load between here and Harpenden. So you can see it's now stopped in the station. It will move off in a moment. There it goes. So it's now moving off. So we tell Naps where the train is coming. If you remember, that was the two bells. And Napsbury will respond to that and put the indication across the train online. So the train's now moving along. It's past number six, so we can put that one back. Now the train has cleared the section back to Harpenden. So we can tell Harpenden the train has gone and that's a, a 2-1 code. So we, we call, Naps, uh, call Harpenden first. And it's 2-1. Train out of section, we put the instrument back to normal. So the train has now gone from, from that section. So if Harpenden had a second train, he'd be free to send, uh, offer it to us and we'd be free to accept it. The train has passed number 12, so we put that one back, number 10, so that's back to normal. And we still have this indication here at Knapsbury. Uh, it's showing the train is still in the section there, so we can't send another train on to Knapsbury yet. The bell now rings, so Knapsbury is calling us, we'll respond to that one. The 2-1 code is the train out of section from Knapsbury. The instrument will go back to normal. So that is the train out of section to, to Knapsbury, a second train we could then send on if we had one. Uh, so that is the full sequence for one train on one line. Of course, the same thing can be happening on all four lines at the same time, and then it gets a bit busier and more complicated. But that was just a simple demonstration of how we signal a train through St Albans.